Hey, thanks for clicking on my video. This review will be for episode 6 of Arrow. Um, in this episode, we kind of got a pretty tight story, mostly dealing with um, the Ted Grant character. So through him, we find out that he actually was a vigilante before, previously, but he never received a whole lot of press because he dealt mostly with, you know, the inner city stuff going on in Starling City. Um, but it does uh, present the opportunity for Oliver and uh, Ted Grant to have a fight uh, because right now uh, Ted Grant is basically being investigated because there was a, uh, you know, dead body in his uh, gym. Grant and Laurel's defending him and everything, but there's a fight between Oliver and uh, Ted Grant that's a very, very well um, choreographed fight. And if Oliver didn't have his, have his bow, I'm not sure if he would have actually won the fight. So that just, you know, shows how skilled Ted Grant is. And uh, it does present the final chance for us to actually see the boxing glove arrow that everyone's been asking for since basically episode one of Arrow. Um, where basically Oliver picks up a boxing glove, puts it on his arrow, because he doesn't want to necessarily hurt or kill Ted Grant with a bow, so he hits him with the boxing glove arrow, which is just a nice nod to the comics. Um, and through the episode, we actually get a nice parallel between um, Ted Grant and who was his sidekick, Isaac, uh, with how Oliver and Roy are as, you know, basically the modern uh, vigilantes. And we see the difference where when uh, Ted's partner, Isaac, killed the man, he basically stopped being a vigilante and turned his back on Isaac or cut him off, basically. And, you know, through this we have where Oliver, you know, is not going to turn away from Roy, not going to turn his back. And this is really tested when, you know, Roy basically comes out and says that, you know, he killed Sarah because of these dreams he's been having um, basically since around when she died. And, you know, he admits this to Felicity first, has his body tested for Mirakuru, you know, no traces of it. And, you know, he honestly believes that he killed Sarah and basically Mirakuru rage. And he just feels so heartbreaking over it because, I mean, he was, he was friends with Sarah. He's, you know, she was part of the Arrow family. And we really see uh, Colton Ains really stretch his acting in this as, he, you know, portrays his emotions very well through his eyes, his mannerisms. I mean, he's been feeling this weight, you know, for almost the whole season at this point. And, you know, he finally comes out and tells everyone. And Laurel's reaction is, you know, she doesn't like him. You know, she's just fighting her own emotions because she's been friends with Rory as well. And, you know, we see how almost everyone on the team is ready to turn their back on Roy or you know, except that he's guilty, except for Oliver. And this is because Oliver knows Roy. I mean, he's trained with them. When you're trained with someone that much and develop that close connection, you can tell what a person is capable of and what they're not capable of. Um, so we get that through through Oliver. And um, by the end of the episode, he, you know, uses the uh, technique from his flashback of how to reveal hidden memories. And we find out that it was basically... Um, a reflection of Roy's guilt over killing the police officer that both Oliver and Sarah did witness and he actually looked up at them. So it was a repressed memory from when he was under the, the Miraku rage. And he, you know, transposed that in his mind and connected it with Sarah's death because, you know, again, probably feels some guilt because he wasn't there to stop her being killed. And so we saw a lot of growth within uh, Roy's character as well as Oliver's and we actually get you know finally that you know they're probably going to start calling him Arsenal now so that was you know finally going to have a name there based on how he's reflected in the comics but it was I was amazing just seeing the the interplay between Oliver and Roy through the episode um, we also see progression in Laurel is now she's you know lo no longer seeing her training as you know a game she wants to avenge Sarah. So as much as Oliver's trying to keep her away from this life and keep her away from training, she's fully committed to, to Ted Grant now. And, um, basically, it seems like kind of setting up for them to become master and protege, basically, where, you know, maybe he's going to put on his hood again or his mask of Wildcat and, you know, she'll take on the, the Black Canary role. Um, so they'll be, you know, acting alongside Team Arrow, maybe teaming up with them, but, you know, we're seeing that 
division basically forming now as there's that dual progression between the two teams now. Um, so it was a very, very exciting episode. Um, you know, we didn't get a whole lot of other advancement in some other plot areas. We didn't get a chance to see Thea and Malcolm, but that's all right. I mean, I, I would have loved to see him because I love what they're doing with their characters. But, you know, it was nice having that break from them. The one thing that I, kind of, I really didn't like about the episode is, is the way they introduced Cupid. Um, now, for those that noticed throughout the episode, there was a redhead um, at a crime scene. At another point, she's walking behind the van. She just kind of popped up throughout the episode. And then at the very end, you know, she has her, you know, basically introduction where she calls herself Cupid and um, shoots Isaac with, a, with an arrow. And I didn't like the delivery of the line. It felt off, not quite, you know, believable, uh, which is kind of sad because this is our first look at Cupid. She's, a, you know, a character from the comics that um, she, her uh, actual name is Carrie Cutter. She's basically uh, part of a military experiment to uh, essentially make her fearless, right? But as a side effect, it enhanced, like, all of her emotions, um, and especially when it came to love. Um, it also gave her enhanced strength and I believe enhanced agility as well. Um, though in the comics she more used a gun, I believe, as opposed to a bow and arrow or anything like that. And um, definitely hand-to-hand combat. Um, so in the comics, basically, um, Green Arrow uh, kills her husband thinking that, you know, he's about to kill her, basically. So she keeps Green Arrow's arrow and instantly, basically, in her mind becomes in love with him she actually scars an arrow on her or an arrow and heart on her chest with that actual arrow so she's like ultimate stalker creepy chick and basically she was set up in the comics as basically uh, an antagonist against black canary as well as green arrow and any other females that came into green arrow's life um so we haven't seen her as far as i know in the show before unless they've had her in some type of background role um, but they're kind of heavy handedly implying now that she's probably the one that killed Sarah. Um, based on Sarah's kind of take, was that Canary character, Sarah and Oliver were together or Sarah and the arrow, arrow were together. So she would have seen that. Um, I don't think she was the actual killer. Cause again, it, Sarah recognized who her killer was. So unless they're going to give us a flashback showing that, you know, they knew each other previously, which may very well happen i still don't think that um she's going to be the actual killer um i do think they're going to reveal that information hopefully at the mid-season break um which should probably be coming up here in the next couple episodes i believe it's around episode eight or nine um we usually get the mid-season break so hopefully by that point we're gonna um end off the the sarah storyline with who killed her um and pick up from there for the back half of the season um, but again, it, it kind of disappointed me the way they uh, presented Cupid. Um, they're probably going to set her up to be an antagonist now against Laurel as she's going to be taking on that Black Canary role. Maybe she's going to go after Felicity. Um, I don't know. It's, you know, I hope they develop the character a little bit better because that first impression definitely did not work for me. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to develop the character and hopefully um, she'll be a bit more solid because I think she's going to be in the next episode so that was the only thing that kind of I didn't like about the episode other than that it was a very strong episode I like seeing the parallels with um, Ted Grant and Isaac and Oliver and Roy um, continuing to see the flashbacks of um, Oliver um, in Hong Kong um, you know basically becoming an asset for uh, Waller and you know learning everything that he experienced then um, and seeing how he uses it in the modern setting. So, uh, again, very strong episode. Um, I like that we now have the conclusion as far as Roy isn't the one that killed Sarah. But at this point, it seems like Oliver may be the only one that knows. So, we'll see in the next episode if they actually tell everyone. Or if something, you know, maybe it's something that happened. You know, we're supposed to see happen off screen or something like that. But but I like having that close because again I didn't think Roy was a killer and it kind of annoyed me uh, as I stated previously in my kind of rant video um, that you know they presented him as a killer because it made no sense so um, so we do see that it, you know the resolution to that again those parallels with Ted Isaac and now um, Ted Grant and Laurel 
versus Oliver and Roy, their progression. And then we've got, of course, Malcolm and Thea. So we've got a lot of, you know, Master Apprentice kind of things going on. So it's a very exciting time for Arrow right now, you know, introducing a new villain character. And, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, just hoping and I can't wait to see um, Ra's al Ghul in the first Arrow and um, see how that's going to play out. That's probably going to happen in the second half of the season, I imagine. Um, that story arc. But uh, again, yeah, very solid episode. Definitely recommend you guys checking out Arrow if you haven't already. Uh, if you enjoyed my video, I'd ask you to go ahead and give me a thumbs up and share the video. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And those that have subscribed already, thank you. I really appreciate that. And I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Um, so that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Bye.